Hello everyone, in this video I am talking about what is open authorization and when we need to use it. Let's try to understand the usage of open authorization with an example. This is Mike. He loves playing mobile games, especially Candy Crush. While he was playing the game, he thought, why should I play this game alone? Instead, it is better to share this game with my friends as well. As the first step, he thought of sharing this game with his Facebook friends. Now you can assume that this is the use case we need to implement. Let's switch our perspective from Mike to the developer of this application. Now you can assume you are a developer of this application Candy Crush. You need to come up with a solution to let the user invite his Facebook friends. So let's evaluate the possible options. One option is of course you can let the player to send the link of the game to each of his Facebook friends. As a developer you have to do nothing with this option. But this is a very difficult task for the user if he has a very large friend list. Because of that this option is not that good. Next option is letting the application to get the friend list and send invitation to each friend. Player will be happy with this approach because he has to click few buttons to get this done. It seems like this is a valuable option. Therefore, let's find out about this option more. If you let Candy Crush to read the friend list, how are you going to do that? One method is you can ask the player to share his Facebook credentials with Candy Crush. Then Candy Crush will programmatically access the user's friend list and send invitation to each user. But do you really like to share your Facebook password with a third party app? The answer will be no. Because one reason is it will provide full access to the user's Facebook account. So the third party application now can read, update or delete anything of the user's account. This is very dangerous. There are users who are using the same password for multiple logins. Then those applications are also compromised. Due to these reasons, sharing password is not a valid method. Do you have any more ways of doing this? The answer is yes. Open authorization comes to the rescue at this time. Here we are only talking about open authorization 2.0 because open authorization 1.0 is deprecated now. Let's try to understand what is open authorization is. Which is the open standard for access delegation. In simple words, open authorization is used as a way for users to grant applications or website access to their information on other websites without sharing password. So in our scenario, user can grant Candy Crush to read his friend list from Facebook. Let's learn what are the advantages of open authorization. First one is no more password sharings. Other one is providing controlled access. In our scenario, with open authorization, Candy Crush can only read the Facebook user list, but it cannot delete or update the friend list or any other resource in the user's Facebook account. Another advantage is access delegation is time bounded. Access is provided only for a given time period. It will be perhaps for a few seconds or a few minutes. Now we know that what is open authorization and what are the usages of that? As the last section, let's learn when to use open authorization. Open authorization is an access delegation protocol. So this is used for authorization purpose only. And this should not be used for authentication purpose. When it comes to the authentication, OpenID Connect comes into the play. With that, we come to the end of this video. I hope to provide more resources about the implementation of open authorization and open ID connect in future videos. See you in the next one. Thank you very much.